Hi, welcome to the 14th session on SAP CRM technical training. In the last session, we have discussed about enhancing the standard components. And in this session, we are going to talk about the generic interaction layer or the genit layer in short. So to talk about the genit layer, first we need to understand where does it stand within the standard framework. And then we will go ahead and talk about the generic interaction layer. So we will look at the diagram of the complete architecture. So when we talk about the framework architecture, so this is the diagram which represents the framework architecture. And as you see, the layer genil is in between of your business object layer, which is bold in short, and the API layer, which is API layer in short. So as per the terminology, we talk about three different layers. One is the presentation layer, the second is the business layer, and third is the business application layer. So the first layer is basically comprising of your presentation layer, where you have your components, which you develop in the component workbench. Then underlying to that, you have your business object layer and general layer, which forms the business layer. Then you have your API and database, which forms the business application layer. So general is acting as a bridge between your APIs and the BOL. So we'll see more about the general layer now. So now that you understood where it sits within the framework, we'll go ahead and see more about each layer and then go to the general layer. So when we talk about the presentation layer, so the presentation layer is the layer which is visible to the end user. Or you can say that this layer is responsible for building the HTML code which is shown to the user or the rendered page which is shown to the user is built from the presentation layer. So this layer is basically based on your web client UI framework. Underlying to that is the business layer where we have bowl and general. So when we talk about bowl, bowl gives us the facilities of buffering. So it provides a temporary storage for your entities, for example, sales order or a business partner at the runtime in a CRM session. And this layer also guarantees the separation of your UI logic from the underlying business logic. Then we have general layer which handles the interaction between your bowl layer and the APIs. So this layer essentially identifies which APIs to call and calls the right APIs depending on the business object on which we are calling the methods. Then we have the business application layer which comprises of your APIs which contain the business logic and the database tables which contain the actual data. So these both combined form the business application layer. So this is a brief introduction on each layer. Now we will go ahead and specifically talk about the genel. Hi, welcome to the 16th session on SAP CRM technical training. In last two sessions, we have seen the theory on genel layer. So in this session, we will see a demo on the genel layer. So as we had discussed, general is a layer which sits in between your bowl layer and the API layer. So this is the layer which is responsible for channelizing the API call based on the general object which you are using in the bowl layer. So as we had discussed, the model which is used within general and bowl is same. That's the reason I am referring to it as the general object which is used in the bowl layer. So first we will try to understand what is genil technically and where can we see it? So genil layer is basically a combination of multiple genil components which are put together into a specific functionality. For example, you take an example of business transaction. It has a specific component called BT. And if you take an example of business partner, it has a specific component called BP. So likewise, Every functionality has its own general component. 
so all these general components put together is giving us a particular functionality which is available in the crm product so where do we look at all these components which we are talking about so for that we will look at spro so spro is the t code for customizing then reference img then you can open customer relationship node so under crm node we have something called crm cross application component so general layer is considered as a cross application component because general is wrapping around your api layer which is again reusable so whatever functionality which is provided through api layer or the general layer can be reused anywhere so one of the consumer of general layer is so there is a possibility to have multiple consumers other than bold so that's the reason it is a cross application component within crm so now we will expand this node crm cross application component under this node we have a node called generic interaction layer by object layer so we will expand this node and you see basic settings over here so basic settings node is having all the general components and component sets which are available in this system so we will just execute this customizing activity so it is a cross plane table because these are the technical components which are created across the system so there is no client restriction though it is a customizing activity so as you have seen it had told us not to change any sap data so whatever data which is provided by sap is also present here along with that we can add our own entries to these tables so that's the reason it gives us a warning saying that don't change the sap data which is provided by standard product so here you see there are two sub dialogs one is component definition and another one is component set definition and under component set definition you have another sub dialog which is component assignment so first we will look at component definition so i have double click component definition it says you are already in the chosen sub dialog so right now you are seeing the component definition sub dialog so this dialog is showing us the screen where we will see all the components which are present within this particular system when i say components these are all the general components so here you see that every general component is having its own name or id we can say then its own description then it has a implementation class which is the class which is responsible for this general component so we had discussed that general layer is a combination of multiple components so it's basically containing all these classes which are responsible for all these components and there is one general core class which is responsible for routing the request to the right class depending on the request it receives from the bold so how does it find the right class depending on the object name and the object name which is present in model is always unique so if you have two objects with the same name the system will give you a dump once the model is loaded into the runtime so that's the reason it's a general naming convention we follow that we always name our custom objects within the customer name space which is z or y so if you need to find out a particular component you can press this position button and give the name of the component which you want to search for so you can give bp so it will take us to the line where we have the bp component so this is the bp component so if you expand this name you will see that this is the component name then you see that the description is business partner and it has a implementation class clcrm build and if you move this scroll bar then you would find the object table and the model table for this particular component so the object table and the model table which you see here are hosting the data which is required for this particular model so the object table will have all the objects which are related to the business partner model and model table will have all the relationship between all these objects which are in the bp model